COVID-19 poses huge challenges for education everywhere. It is essential that universities take measures to ensure fair outcomes for this year's intake and beyond. So what are the problems and how can they be solved? My name is Sam and this is Oxcentric. In this video, I'm going to be using the University of Oxford as a case study for how undergraduate admissions at UK universities could respond to the COVID-19 crisis. As usual, this is primarily because I know the most about Oxford, but also because they're committed to improving access for underrepresented groups. Oxford has been making positive progress, which we cannot let the pandemic undo. For this reason, I'll be talking about some Oxford-specific schemes, though elements of this would fit into a more universal strategy. COVID-19 and the closure of schools will have undoubtedly deepened existing educational inequalities. The main aim of university admissions, in my opinion, should be to ensure fair outcomes, which is easier said than done in the current situation. I personally foresee COVID-19 having consequences on four-year groups. Let's break these down. No, wrong type of breakdown, not again. Case 1, Year 13s. I personally belong to this group which is Year 13 students, but extends to any Oxford offer holders for 2020. The situation is evolving from day to day, but this is accurate as of the middle of July 2020. This year, teachers will suggest an a level grade for their students based off past work, mock exams and other evidence. Additionally, they will rank older students in their subjects. The major concern this year is that teachers estimated grades are unrealistically high, and therefore to bring results in line with those from 2019, many students' grades will be lowered. This has big consequences. The standardisation system is still quite ambiguous, but it seems likely that anomalous students at both the top and bottom ends of the grade spectrum may be shifted further towards the centre. Many are worried that strong students from worse schools may lose out, as their grades could be rounded down due to the centre's poorer past performance. This could be an issue in better schools too if results are unprecedented. Personally, despite being a very good state school, my sixth form rarely has multiple students achieve A star in further maths. However, this year there are four students predicted A stars in the subject who also achieved this grade in their mocks. Under the current system, there's concern that at least one of us might lose out on the top grade. This fear is worsened by the lack of an appeal system for A-level students this year, leaving pupils worried about receiving an unfair grade, being rejected from their universities, and therefore being forced to reapply in 2021. As a separate issue, some international students may be unable to come to Oxford in October. We have a good idea what Oxford's response to these issues will be, though not all of this is confirmed. The likely solution is to accept more students with near-miss grades, particularly if they are from a lower performing school. This aligns with government recommendations for greater flexibility from university admissions in 2020. Regarding international applicants, Oxford said they will support any students who have to quarantine and expect all students to be in residence by January. However, some may still choose to reject the Oxford offer due to the additional challenges of living and travelling abroad currently. On average, from 2015 to 2019, Oxford made 16% more offers than it had undergraduate places. For 2020 entry, greater flexibility on near-miss grades may mean that a greater proportion of UK offer holders are accepted. Despite this, an expected decrease in the number of international students could lead to a standard-sized intake. 2020 could produce the logistical problem of finding space for what could potentially be a larger than average cohort if most international students still accept their places. This could lead to more students having to live out of college in later years due to a lack of accommodation. You gotta love Oxford private renting. You gotta love it. Case 2, Year 12s. Those applying for 2021 entry will experience the most challenges with, frankly, no simple answers. Very recently, Oxford announced that interviews for 2021 entry will be conducted online, which will undoubtedly provide a very different interview experience. Online interviews would normally be done for international students, so this is a familiar process. However, rolling it out on a larger scale will undoubtedly have challenges for both the university and its applicants. We don't know the full details yet, but digital access for students will need to be considered to ensure fairness. Students will have had huge variations in educational provision over lockdown, with those at the worst funded state schools disproportionately losing time compared to privately educated pupils. This may lead to lower predicted grades and worse results for students in areas with poor higher education access. Many applicants will have lost out opportunities to set apart their personal statement due to the pandemic, including work experience, summer schools and more. Particularly, those who rely on libraries for books and IT equipment may have struggled to find alternative activities to demonstrate an interest in their subject. One last concern is about virtual open days substituting a face-to-face -face open day. 
a lot of what is gained on an open day can't be quantified. It's about seeing if a place feels right rather than looks right on paper. For this reason, some unsure students may choose not to apply to Oxford. Though, for the record, if you do fall into this category, I would still highly encourage you to go for it. So, let's talk responses. First and foremost, all universities will need to be aware of many more students with mitigating circumstances in 2021. However, as disruption is so widespread, universities may struggle to understand which candidates were the worst affected and therefore deserve special consideration. One of Oxford's first actions was to move their flagship state school access scheme, Unique, fully online for 2020. I personally expect the provision will be less powerful this year, as one of the best elements of Unique is the immersion in Oxford life. Despite this, Unique Digital will still demonstrate a student's ability and dedication if they complete the course. So what more could Oxford do? Let me indulge in some speculative suggestions. One option to try and level the playing field would be to weight the personal statement less in an application. This would be fair if it was thought that mostly disadvantaged students lost out on the opportunity to build a stronger interest in their subject. However, this might cause more problems for humanities than STEM as they are more concerned with the statement. Secondly, more reliable pre-COVID-19 data like existing GCSEs could be used more to help fairly assess a student's potential. Such data is already used, for example by the physics department who shortlist candidates based off the PAT mark and a contextual GCSE score, so this would only require tweaks in methods. Thirdly, the Opportunity Oxford Summer Preparation Program could be expanded if there was concern that offer holders might be coming to Oxford underprepared in October. On a similar note, accelerating the development of the Foundation Year Scheme pioneered by Lady Margaret Hall could assist a limited number of disadvantaged students whose education was most severely impacted by COVID-19 disruption. If you've never heard of this scheme, the Foundation Year is a year-long course which prepares students from underrepresented backgrounds for studying their chosen subject at university. It has lower grade requirements than undergraduate entry, but does not guarantee a place on a full Oxford course. The scheme intended to offer 50 places a year for 2023 entry by 2022. However, I think it would be beneficial to help combat the current situation if this was possible by 2021. Case three, year 11s. Year 11s had their GCSE exams canceled. They are now in a similar situation to year 13s, where teachers' estimated grades will now be used. These predictions could vary from underestimates performance to overestimates. Once again, with weaker students at the best schools set to benefit, and stronger students at worst schools set to lose out. The current year 11 are more than a year off applying for university, but there's still some foreseeable consequences. The first effect could be students getting rejected from aspirational sixth forms and colleges if their GCSE results are worse than they might have attained otherwise. The second concern is a knock-on effect of lost teaching time at GCSE affecting A-level performance. Personally, I would argue that the content at A-level is so different that this shouldn't have a significant effect. However, if students have done little to no academic work since March, then they may be further challenged by the jump to much more intense A-levels. So those are the problems, what are the responses? For this cohort, the biggest responses need to be much more from sixth forms and colleges than universities. I would expect Oxford and universities in general to reduce how much they weight GCSEs for those who sat them in 2020, as they may well be unreflective of a candidate's true intelligence. As for the problem of aspirational sixth forms, Hopefully they too will be flexible to ensure that students with potential still have the best opportunities available to them. Current year 11 should be encouraged to keep on learning, whether it be self-motivated or work set by school. Mandatory preparation activities set in August would be one possible option. Personally speaking, I know the A-level transition is hard. Students struggling more than average with new content could add additional pressure onto an already overstretched school pastoral care system. For this reason, it is essential that pupils be prepared for starting in September. Case 4, Year 10s. On to our final year. Year 10s experience some of the same issues as Year 12s. Variations in lockdown learning will lead to differences in GCSE attainment, with those who did more work over lockdown likely to perform better than those who did less. The likely outcome of this would be lower scores in all subjects and fields, though perhaps with a more pronounced gap between those in better schools that set more work over lockdown than those in worse schools that didn't. In terms of contextual GCSEs, strong students will still be able to distinguish themselves. If an entire year, including the brightest students, perform worse, then the best will still appear as strong relative to the rest of their cohort. Despite this, I would expect and personally advocate a smaller weighting of current year 10's GCSE results. Even if the contextual data could show a student as better than their cohort, 
I think the effect of disruption will vary from person to person and be very hard to quantify. I also think that universities will still need more detail on COVID-19 related mitigating circumstances to help make decisions fair. For example, imagine that a student predicted mostly 7s, 8s and 9s at an average state school. However, due to COVID-19, one of their parents is made redundant and cannot immediately find another job. For this reason, the student might have to find a job themselves or do more to help the family, therefore reducing their time for learning and probably their grades. These kinds of situations will need to be informed to universities to give these students a fair chance, especially if it goes on to affect their A-level performance. After the current year terms have applied, I believe higher education admissions would return mostly to normal. Yet, there may still be students left in challenging situations by COVID-19 who require additional help to access their potential. A robust extenuating circumstances system is key in assisting them. Conclusion I ultimately want to end on a note of hope. Whilst the pandemic has caused major disruption, with empathy and strategy we can help to build back better to ensure that no student with potential loses out. If you are a student in one of the years I've discussed, maybe at a lower performing school, please don't lose hope. What I've discussed here is the structural challenges and changes to help streamline your success, but there is no substitute for your own hard work. If you keep believing that you can achieve, you make it much more likely to become reality. Student voices on these issues are more important than ever. Only by speaking up about our concerns can we see them addressed. Leave a comment if you have anything specifically worrying you about applying to Oxford or universities in general post-COVID-19. It's an evolving situation, so I'll be interested to see if anything that I've discussed here actually happens and what extra advice is issued in future. In the meanwhile, keep learning. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content. Including work experience, work experience, work experience, ah!